Welcome to this edition of News Today, a series in which we discuss and briefly analyze the important news of the day. Let's have a look at today's main headlines. Gwalior and Cozy Code have joined the UNESCO's Creative Cities Network, center to appoint national level monitors to oversee livestock schemes. The Prime Ministers of India and Bangladesh have jointly inaugurated three developmental projects in Bangladesh. A study finds hydroclimatic extremes to intensify in near future over the Indian river basins. RBI to regulate entities facilitating cross-border payment transactions. World's first agreement on artificial intelligence named Bletchley Declaration signed at UK AI Safety Summit. Starting with the first main news, Gwalior and Cozy Code have joined the UNESCO's Creative Cities Network. The UNESCO's Creative Cities Network was created in 2004 and its tag gives global recognition and boosts tourism. Currently, it has 350 cities under the network and these tags are given in 7 fields namely crafts and folk art, design, film, gastronomy, literature, media arts and music. Coming back to the news, the two Indian cities are among the 55 cities that have joined the Creative Cities Network on the World Cities Day, which is celebrated on 31st October. These new cities were acknowledged for their strong commitment to harnessing culture and creativity as part of their developmental strategies. Let's have a look at Cozy Code first. It has been listed as the city of literature. It has a robust literary foundation with over 500 libraries and more than 70 publishers. and it also boasts a high level of literary education additionally it is also a permanent venue for the annual kerala literature festival and numerous book festivals coming to gwalior it has been listed as the city of music it has a rich musical history encompassing legends like mia tansin and baliti bavra it is also considered the birthplace of gwalior gharana which is the oldest hindustani musical gharana Having said this, let's see which other Indian cities are on the Creative Cities Network. Here in Mumbai is listed under film, Chennai for music, Hyderabad for gastronomy, Varanasi for music, and Jaipur and Srinagar for crafts and folk art. The next news is the center is going to appoint national level monitors or NLMs to oversee livestock schemes. The NLMs will be third party independent monitors. individuals and institutions deployed by the government the nlms aim to remove technical backstopping faced by the implementing agencies in the implementation of the schemes nlms will determine if incentives to para vets technicians farmers have been distributed as envisaged under the scheme and whether data generated has been uploaded the national level monitors covers four important missions starting with the first the national livestock mission which focuses on entrepreneurship development and breed improvement in poultry sheep goat and piggery including feed and fodder development the second important mission is rashtriya gokul mission or rgm which aims at the development and conservation of indigenous bovine breeds national program for dairy development to enhance the quality of milk and milk products and increase the share of organized milk procurement and lastly the livestock health and disease control program to improve the animal health sector by prophylactic vaccination programs capacity building etc now let's discuss the significance of the livestock sector the contribution of the sector to agriculture has increased from 24.32% to 30.87% in 7 years the livestock sector has been witnessing an annual growth rate of 7.93% from 2014-15 to 2020-21 it has contributed 6.32% to the total gva in 2020-21 moving on the prime ministers of india and bangladesh have jointly inaugurated three development projects in bangladesh herein the indian assisted development projects include the khulna mongla port rail line which connects the mongla port and the khulna rail network through broad gauge rail route This connection also extends to India through the Petra Pole cross border rail link. Also, the unit 2 of Maitri super thermal power project which is situated in the Khulna enhances Bangladesh's energy security. It has been implemented by the Bangladesh India Friendship Power Company Private Limited. 
This company is a joint venture between India's NTPC Limited and Bangladesh Power Development Board. The third project is the Akhara Agartala Cross Border Rail Link. It connects Bangladesh to Tripura. This new cross border link cuts the travel time from Kolkata to Tripura to 10 hours from the current 38 hours, improving goods transport to India's northeastern states. Let's have a look at other key areas of cooperation. In the economic sphere, the bilateral trade stands at $14.2 billion in the financial year 2021-22. Also, Bangladesh is India's biggest trade partner in South Asia and India is the second biggest trade partner of Bangladesh in Asia. In the defence sector, initiatives like the annual defence dialogue and military exercises such as Sampriti and Milan take place. Also, the people-to-people -people connect via border hearts, Saborno Jayanti scholarships to students of Bangladesh also take place. Recently, Indian scientists have brought to light that hydroclimate extremes are going to intensify in the near future over the Indian river basins. The scientists used Earth system models or ESMs and high resolution simulated precipitation from coupled model intercomparison project 6 experiments. And the research was supported under climate change program of the Department of Science and Technology. Before going through the key findings of the research, let's briefly discuss CMIP. CMIP is a project of World Climate Research Program, which is sponsored by International Science Council, World Meteorological Organization and Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. And ESMs or Earth System Models are a complex integration of environmental variables used for understanding our planet. Now, moving to the key findings of the research. The study says hydroclimatic extreme events like intensive rainfall and droughts may have a considerable impact on agriculture, health, etc. During near and mid-future, frequency of precipitation extremes over west-flowing river basins and western ghats is going to increase. Due to intensification of extreme rainfall, western ghats, Indus, west and central Indian river basins will be highly vulnerable. The research says lower Ganga basin will experience agricultural drought in near future. Major cities like Mumbai and Pune would have a high potential for urban flooding. Apart from the findings, the research also makes some recommendations like identifying major hotspots for urban flooding to design appropriate basin-wise climate adaptation and mitigation strategies and devising strategies to cope with water surplus or scarcity. There are two important missions under the Climate Change Program of DST, the National Mission for Sustaining Himalayan Ecosystem and National Mission on Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change. Both the missions are part of the National Action Plan on Climate Change. In another news, RBI to regulate entities facilitating cross-border payment transactions. Previously, RBI only regulated the payment aggregators that process domestic online transactions. Payment aggregators enable the e-commerce sites and merchants to accept various payment methods from customers, eliminating the need for merchants to create their own payment integration systems. The example of such payment aggregator is Paytm. The RBI's directive has been issued under the Payments and Settlement Systems Act 2007 and the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. The entities will be treated as payment aggregator cross-border and the maximum value per unit of goods or services sold or purchased in import and export transactions processed by them shall be Rs 25 lakhs. Having said this, let's have a look at the cross-border payments. They are financial transactions where the payer and the recipient are based in separate countries. They cover both wholesale and retail payments including remittances. The significance of cross-border payments lies in the fact that it has a huge potential as it is estimated to be $190 trillion in 2023 and expected to reach around $290 trillion by 2030. It also promotes ease of doing business like the manufacturers expanding their supply chains across borders. They also provide ease of transactions like the migrants sending money via international remittances. Additionally, they promote international trade and e-commerce. However, there are certain challenges like the lack of standardization of financial data, security risk in terms of money laundering and terror financing, and differing government regulations on the matter. Before we conclude this news, let's explore the steps taken by the government for cross-border payments. These include the UPI, the NPCI International Payments Limited, 
and the payments vision 2025. Moving on to the next news, the world's first agreement on artificial intelligence called Bletchley Declaration has been signed at the UK AI Safety Summit. The declaration is named after Bletchley Park, which was the venue of the summit. The park also served as a venue for Britain's code-breaking exercise during World War II. It was signed by the European Union and 28 other countries, including India, US, UK, China, France, Saudi Arabia, and UAE. Another related development is that South Korea will co-host a mini virtual AI summit in the next six months. Let's go through the key highlights of the declaration. The declaration recognizes AI's potential to enhance human well-being as well as the risks posed by the AI, including frontier AI. Now, what is frontier AI? Frontier AI refers to highly capable foundational generative AI models that could possess dangerous capabilities that can pose severe risks to public safety. The declaration highlights the substantial risks that may arise from the potential intentional misuse or unintended issues of control relating to alignment with human intent. These issues are in part because those capabilities are not fully understood and are therefore hard to predict. Calling such risks as inherently international in nature, the declaration urges for international cooperation among companies, civil societies and academia to address them. The agenda for mitigating risks will focus on building a shared scientific understanding and risk-based policies across countries. While the declaration highlights the importance of AI, it does not suggest any concrete measures. The place in the news today is Bolivia. La Paz is the administrative capital of Bolivia, while Sucre is its constitutional capital. Recently, Bolivia severed diplomatic ties with Israel over the latter's disproportionate attack on Gaza. Let's briefly discuss the political boundaries of Bolivia. Well, Bolivia is a landlocked country in the continent of South America. It is bounded by Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, Chile, and Peru. Now, let's shed some light on its geographical features. One third of Bolivia's territory lies in the Andes Mountains. Its highest point is Mount Sakama. Madeira, Paraguay and Mamore are its important rivers. Lake Titicaca in Bolivia is the largest freshwater lake in South America and the highest of the world's large lakes. As we conclude today's main news, let's go through some quick updates. A five-judge constitution bench remarked that the electoral bond scheme suffers from selective anonymity leading to an information hole. Donors, instead of investing a big sum to purchase the bond, may aggregate bonds for smaller amounts from different buyers. The Home Ministry has told the states to finalize beneficiaries under the Central Scheme for Underprivileged Prisoners. The scheme aims at enabling poor prisoners to get out of prison. Employees Provident Fund organization celebrates its 71st Foundation Day. It is a statutory body that came into existence under the Employees Provident Fund and Miscellaneous Provisions Act of 1952. The inaugural Global Conference on Cooperation in Enforcement Matters that was organized by the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence recently concluded in New Delhi. Recently, a seminar on role of financial institutions in promoting e-negotiable warehouse receipts based pledge finance was organized. The e-negotiable warehouse receipts are issued in negotiable form, making them eligible as collateral. India's Exim Bank has listed 10-year dollar 1 billion sustainability bond on sustainable bond market platform at the London Stock Exchange. A contempt petition was filed against the Goa government for not notifying a tiger reserve in Mahadei Wildlife Sanctuary as directed by the Bombay High Court. Mahadei Wildlife Sanctuary is an international bird area and is part of the Mahadei River Basin. Dholes have made a rare appearance in Debrigad Wildlife Sanctuary in Odisha. Dhol is a wild Asian carnivore of the dog family and plays an important role as apex predator in forest ecosystems. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to the test in today's segment of Test Your Learning.
Thank you for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answer to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.